Hello guys, today we are starting a new exciting chapter, muscle tissue. Remember muscle tissue is one of the four types of tissue that we described back then uh, at the beginning of the term when you and me we met. Uh, we described back then the epithelial tissue that covers or lines something. Uh, connective tissue was extensively described. Uh, muscle tissue, we're going to describe it today, and in about, let's say, one, two chapters, we are going to dedicate quite some time to describe the fourth and last type of tissue, the nervous tissue. And remember that when we combine different types of tissue, we form an organ. So we are going to describe in here muscles first as a tissue, but then as an organ, okay? So to start the description of, of muscle tissue, we have first to mention that we have three different types of muscle tissue. We have the skeletal muscle tissue, the cardiac, and the smooth muscle tissue. Now, let's, I do this table just because for me it's just way easier if we just compare the three types of tissues. Uh, let's name first the differences between the three types of tissues. So the location, where do you think we are going to find the skeletal muscle tissue? Where do you think we're going to find it? In the heart? No, this is a bone. Oh my gosh, that's kind of a big distal epiphysis, huh? Well, the skeletal muscle tissue is attached to bones. Okay, but there's a second location for this type of tissue, and please do not forget this, you tend to forget this, but it's also located on the skin. It can be attached to the skin, or it can be located within the skin. For example, erector pili muscle is a muscle located on the dermis, within the skin, and when it contracts, because a lot of factors, and a lot of factors that we know, and a lot of them that needs to be yet uh, discovered, uh, the thing is that when this muscle contracts in your dermis, it creates the goosebumps. Um, what else? There is a muscle, the platysma, in your neck that attaches to the skin of your neck and it tenses the skin of the neck. That's another example of muscles that this one is not located on the skin but attaches to the skin. Now, where do you think we're going to find the cardiac muscle tissue? Mm, in the bones? No. Now, this is a heart and is located only, only, only on the heart. Don't say cardiovascular system because cardiovascular system includes blood vessels and blood vessels do not contain cardiac muscle tissue. Only the heart, the organ, the heart. Now, smooth muscle tissue, where do you think we can find that one? Well, this is pretty easy, guys. If that type of tissue that you are examining is not attached to a bone, it's not on the skin, and it's not in the heart, there is a smooth muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue usually um, is present on the wall of the hollow organs, of the viscera, forming the digestive system, urinary system, respiratory, reproductive, urinary, I mentioned urinary already, um, endocrine system, okay? All of these hollow organs, let's say the stomach, intestines, the bladder, uh, they, the wall of these organs contain smooth muscle tissue. Now, <clears throat> functions in general for all of these three types of muscles. What are the functions of muscles? To move, right? It moves something. What is that something that a skeletal muscle will move? Well, if it's attached to the bone, of course, it's going to move bones, okay? So a skeletal muscles moves bones. And the way, I, I, the easy way to understand this maybe is let's use these two, we have this blue pen and the pink marker, two different bones. 
and remember they meet at a place that we call the articulation right here right and one end of the skeletal muscle attaches in the pink bone and the other end attaches on the blue bone so spanning or skipping or crossing the joint right so when this muscle contracts shortens the the size the length of the of the entire muscle shortens is gets is reduced um, it moves the skeleton it pulls bones muscles the skeletal muscles always pull bones there's a pulling um, action they can never push a bone they just pull it very important to keep in mind now what else well we described you remember last chapter in joint uh, that skeletal muscles and its tendon can provide stability to joints to different joints so that's another I'm sorry another function what else well it's involved in uh, our posture so we can keep the erect uh, uh, posture and cer certain uh, muscle tone uh, what else what else what else muscle skeletal muscle when it contracts it generates heat and this heat warms up our body raises our body temperature so this is one of the important mechanisms the body have to control our body temperature so it's involved in thermal regulation uh, what else that's pretty much it now let's describe the functions of the cardiac muscle tissue what can the cardiac muscle tissue move what do you have here inside your heart what do you have in there feelings i know you have feelings but you also have blood and that's what we're going to move in here um cardiac muscle tissue contraction pumps contracts and pumps the blood there is within the heart to be you know uh ejected into the blood vessels into the arteries now smooth muscle this is a tricky one what does a smooth smooth muscle move let's you know i know it's not elegant it's not an anatomical term is please don't use it i discourage you actually to use this term but actually smooth muscle tissue moves a lot of stuff <laughs> because it depends on what organ we are referring to if we're referring to the stomach to the pharynx well we're moving food we're referring to the large intestine we're moving poo poo we're referring to the urinary bladder ureters in the urinary system we're moving pee pee if we are referring to sweat glands we're moving sweat we're referring to respiratory tract uh, organs we are moving respiratory secretions mucus mostly okay so <clears throat> those are the functions of uh, the three type of muscle tissue now let's describe the cells how do they look like and let's start with the skeletal and the skeletal muscle tissue looks like a big well it can be long it can be short but it looks like a cylinder let's go back to my marker okay it looks something like this it's a cylinder it can be short if we're talking about a muscle on your face for example but it can be as long as the sartorius which is the longest muscle on your thigh it can be that uh long that long uh well nine is like this uh what else okay let's see the shape of the cardiac cell the cardiac cell shape this cell is actually shorter way shorter than the the skeletal muscle cell because it's located only on the heart and the heart is a small organ but the shape is very funny it's not a cylinder this one has branches okay it has these branches and these branches at actually at these branches another cardiac cell meets with this one and then let's draw another one maybe in here so see, I'm drawing three, or drawing there, three different types of uh, cardiac cells. Now, right here, 
where these cells meet, we call it inter, they're specialized intercellular junctions that we called intercalated disc. Intercalated disc. And these are exclusive, uh, an exclusive feature of the heart. Now, the smooth muscle tissue, totally different shape, um, sorry, the cell, the smooth muscle uh, cell looks something like that. Hmm, it looks like a potato. Well, the thing is that it's fat on the middle and thin on the ends, okay? Spindle shaped. That's your smooth muscle uh, uh, cell. Now, let's add every cell has nuclei, right? So let's do some nuclei or nuclei, plural or nucleus on singular. Let's start with the smooth. Let's make it fun. <laughs> on the smooth muscle, it has only one cell. Uh, one nucleus per cell. Uh, cardiac muscle cells have also one nucleus located usually on the middle. It can have more, it can have up to, up to three, five uh, nucleus, but no more than that. So let's see the skeletal muscle. You know, it will take me the entire uh, PowerPoint presentation to draw the amount of nucleus that we can find in a skeletal muscle because it has hundreds of muscles, ah, of nuclei on the cell. So skeletal muscle cells have at least 100 nuclei uh, and this is because we have a large cytoplasm to control. Uh, cardiac muscle cell usually have one, it can be a little bit more, up to three or five. And um, smooth muscle cell only have one. Now, let's see inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, let's call it like that by, for this moment, at this moment. Um, inside the cytoplasm, we're going to see on the skeletal muscle, we're going to see a lot of lines, uh, a lot of fibers, uh, or filaments, okay? And they have a pattern and looks like striations when you look at the cell like that under the microscope. We will see that in a little while, okay? That same pattern is described or is seen on the um, cardiac muscle cells. They also have those striations in the, inside the cytoplasm. So we call these two types of muscles striated muscles, the skeletal and the cardiac. Smooth muscle tissue is actually called smooth because it lacks those striations. It's a non-striated muscle. It's clean. Look at the cytoplasm. No mess in there. Okay, what else? Let's leave it like that. In Yes, let's leave it like that and then we describe some other things. Um, another important thing that is different in these three types of tissue, muscle tissues, is the fact that some of them we can consciously control it and others we just cannot, sadly, okay? Which one do you think we can voluntarily control the contraction of that type of muscle? Can you tell to your biceps bracky to please contract so you can leave the anatomy book? Yes, you can think and you can perform that movement because you want to. So we called the skeletal muscle a volun... Oh, let's, let's grab black because I don't think you're going to see that. Okay, this is a voluntary... Voluntarily... Oh, I'm not going to write the entire thing. The, it's a voluntarily um, muscle, meaning that it's under our conscious control. Can you voluntarily contr uh, control the contraction of your heart? Really? Can you tell to your heart, contract, stop? And that would be boring, you know? You know how many times the heart contracts in the entire life? It will be boring to think about every single beat. 
contract, relax, contract, relax. This escapes our conscious mind. We have no control over the contraction of the, um, the cardiac heart. So this is involuntary muscle. Just like the smooth muscle tissue is also an uh, involuntary type of muscle. So cardiac and smooth muscle tissues are involuntarily involuntary and uh, skeletal muscle tissue is a voluntary uh, muscle or is under our conscious control. Um, smooth muscle tissue, uh, for example, is the one that when the room is quiet but full of people uh, and we have one... Um, I know you have experienced this, uh, those embarrassing moments when everybody is quiet and then your stomach decides that it has a, vo a voice on its own and do like, oh, okay, that's your stomach moving, that's your um, stomach contracting uh, and you cannot sadly control that. Okay, so that's the involuntarily, involuntary control, the escape or conscious mind or the smooth muscle tissue. Now, that reminds me, there is, well, let me describe that in the next slide. Let's move and see some pictures, better than my drawings, right? So in here, a skeletal muscle tissue, so it's attached to the bones, but it's also found on the skin. And see, these are the striations that I was uh, telling you about. Um, let me show you the cell. This, am I drawing? No, right? Uh, black. Okay, this is one cell, this cylinder. This is another cell. See, one, two, three, four, five, six cells. Well, I started counting in here. So see the nuclei that they have many in just that part of the cell. That's a section of the cell. See, looks at the cylinder and all of those are nuclei. And do you see all of these striations? It's because inside they have all of those filaments that we'll describe later. So striated muscle, cylind cylindrical cells, many, many, many nuclei uh, is under our voluntary control. Uh, conscious control and is located on um, bones and skin. Look at the cardiac, located only on the heart, not on the blood vessels, only on the heart. Uh, this is one cell. Let me see. Let me grab one. There is okay, maybe this one. See this? This line marks are the intercalated disc. So it marks the junction between this cell and these cells. You cannot see pretty well the branches in here. Maybe in here, this is one branch. This is one branch, okay? So remember, they are branching cells. This is the cell and these are the branches. And these branches mean that these places that are called intercalated disc. Usually the cells have one nucleus, but can you see in here? This one has two. You can have up to three to five nucleus, uh, nuclei and it just moves a lot, pumps a lot. And the smooth muscle tissue, can you see the cute spindle-shaped fibers in here? Well, look at it in here, okay? And this one only has one nucleus. So in here, there are some examples, like in the ureter, the blood vessels, urinary bladder, um, all your digestive organs in the wall contain the smooth muscle tissue. Now, the thing I wanted to talk you to talk about before is the sphincters. Sphincters are like valves that controls the opening of the external openings of the body, especially they are located. Well, there are several, but the ones that I'm going to use now is the one on your rear end at the anus, and this one at the end of the urinary system. So the ones that we use to pee and the ones that we use to poop. So this sphincter consists actually of the two types of muscle, of course, not the cardiac. So the innermost part of this muscle consists of smooth, of this sphincter, I'm sorry, consists of smooth muscle tissue. We have no control over that 
uh, smooth muscle tissue contraction. When we have to go, we have to go. That's what it makes us feel that we need to go, okay? Now, thanks to our creator, we have externally another layer in that sphincter of muscle tissue, but this one is the skeletal muscle tissue. Thanks to that, and thanks that we can consciously control the contraction of the skeletal muscle tissue, that's the one that you can contract to hold your uh, pipi, your caca, your poo poo, uh, and um, control the exit of these substances. So this is a good example uh, that illustrate the voluntary and involuntary controlled control of the skeletal and smooth muscle tissue. Now, let's move to the next uh, video, and in there we're going to describe now the dif uh, no, these are the differences, how they are all alike. What are the things that they all have in common? Okay, next video.